Yeah, he's saying go, 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 go. go. Shop channel. I am John here with Jeremy doing a very special unboxing. You know why? Because that's what we do. It is something big. This is the ultimate Tony Rice guitar clone shootout. Of the things that uh, when I finally saw the picture that I was most impressed with, this sunburst. This looks original. It looks right. If Hope you guys enjoy it. This is Alan Bybee in Grasstown. Uh, my name is Alec Beshin. I took that idea, kind of built on it layer by layer. It kind of sounded like and reminded me of some of my influences, so I called the song Borrowed. Hey guys, it is New Guitar Thursday. Glad to be with you on Thursday. It has been a weird day today. Welcome back, it's Takeover Tuesday. I'm so happy to have you back here at the acoustic shop. Mask on! Is that awkward? That was awkward, wasn't it? It really was. <laughs> Hi guys, this is John here at the Kissy Shop. It is New Guitar Thursday. I, I apologize. I've been on the phone. Oh, look at this. I can't even stand straight. Uh, I've been on the phone all day working on projects. My brain is about to explode. There is so much happening right now, and it's all great. It's all good stuff. Um, it's just going to keep us busy. Today, we're going to be doing some amazing unboxings. Today marks the first look at the Dreadnought Bourgeois Touchstones, the brand new mandolins from Bourgeois. We're going to talk about the OM again. We did unbox that earlier, but we're going to talk about it some more uh, today. We've got other instruments that came in. I'm going to talk about those. Uh, I want to talk about an event that's actually happening tonight, and I don't have all the details there on our Facebook page, but the John Stickley tri Trio is in town in Springfield. Amazing guitar player. I've actually been following him for a while. I should have got a hold of him, had him come into the shop. Uh, but they are here in Springfield. If you're in Springfield, you need to check out that show. And again, there's some information on our page. Tonight at 7. $20. $20 at the door. There you go. I'm getting all the information here. Where's the venue again? I'm going to try to get out there. The Barn House. 5484 West Sunshine. That's way out west. Anyway, uh, check it all out. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's like, that's in another town almost. But anyway, uh, check out that show because I'm serious. It'll be really, really good. And, and it's good to support some of these uh, acoustic acts that are making their way into town. Um, I've been on the phone uh, with getting logistics. Winfield is coming up. We are less than 20 days. I think we're down to like 18 days uh, to Winfield and we have been getting in tons of inventory. Jackson, I've been putting him through the ringer. He has been ordering so much stuff. We're gonna have so much stuff. Wigan picks, blue chip picks, page capos. Um, you didn't get any of that? No, oh my God, oh no! Oh no, just kidding. Anyway, he's kidding. He's been getting, we've got, we've got hundreds of sets of D'Addario strings, GHS strings, you name it. All the accessories that you could want. The instruments are on their way. Um, so that's happening two weeks after that IBMA. I've got a killer lineup. Uh, we will be doing live broadcasts, both from uh, Winfield and IBMA. Great lineup of people uh, gonna be with us all week long. I just got off the phone with Andrea Roberts. She's gonna have Seth Mulder uh, and his new band. Uh, I'm trying to get Jaylee uh, Roberts in there. I'm trying to get Sister Sadie in there. That's a possibility. There's uh, so a lot of really cool ones. 
brands. Thompson's going to be showing off guitars. Boucher, Bourgeois, uh, gosh, first Gallagher, uh, Breedlove, Bedell, Eastman, of course. Um, uh, yes, I did say Thompson. You see, she's listening in there and all kinds of stuff. We'll also be bringing some of our other stuff, some of our cool merch. I'm ordering cool merch. There's going to be giveaways at IBMA and Winfield that if you sign up for. And here's an even more impressive thing. Just found out, just set this up yesterday. We're going to be giving away an Eastman E1D for free. There's going to be a drawing for it. So stay tuned for that as part of the Winfield and IBMA run. It's going to be a contest and we're going to be dra drawing for it. So Watch for that. Lots of cool stuff. What else am I missing, Keegan? Giveaway. Tell me. Giveaway. We're also got another giveaway. Blue chip picks. That one's due next week. Tuesday. Tuesday. We'll announcing, the winner. announcing the winner Tuesday. Jackson, did you know you're announcing the winner Tuesday? What? Oh yes. <laughs> Yeah, for the blue chip pick. I, I was, for the I blue chip pick. My mind. I was like, Dude, You're going to announce the winner. Winfield? Yeah, you should. I think you should announce the Winfield <laughs> winners. Anyway, <laughs> he's going to do it from right here in Springfield. It's going to be great. <laughs> um, no, uh, we. if you have not done that, check out. It's an Instagram contest. Um, link is in the description. That's Jeremy calling me. Look at this. Jeremy is calling me while I'm live. He should know better. Uh, anyway, link is in the description. Make sure to enter that contest. A lot of you have entered a lot. Trust me, I know. I get a notification for every single entry. And some of you are putting like 50 and 60 in a row ent entries. And I'm like, half a thousand comments. That's not a real number. A half a thousand, it's five. That's like 500, right? right? You realize that. It makes it seem bigger if you say half a thousand. Guys, if you believe that that is something you should say, half a thousand, is it really something? Say it down below. Anyway, again, we're going to be doing some live talking about some new stuff. If you uh, have any questions about it, make sure you do that. They're monitoring all this. They will tell me if you have any questions. Oh, cool event coming up. Well, I forgot. Jeremy Shepard is going to be here starting on Wednesday of next week. He's going to hang with us uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and leave Friday, I believe. We're kicking him out Friday. He cannot stay any longer than that. He's got to go. He's just got to. Anyway, Jeremy Shepard will be here, the Guitar Hunter. We're going to be doing some really cool stuff. I've actually pledged uh, as of yesterday. I'm trying to get uh, traction for this. We're, uh, the Come and Go Around the Corner has the uh, Packy One Chip Challenge, and we're going to see if we can get him to take the One Chip, Hottest Chip in the World Challenge. You guys, <laughs> it's 10 bucks a chip, really. So if you guys want to see that, put that also in the comments. I'd love to see if you're interested in watching Jeremy Shepard's face blow up. I think it would be awesome. He might just be, he might be just totally cool with it. I don't know what that guy's guts built out of. I, I can't handle that stuff anymore. I'm not scared, but uh, I'll try it. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, Jeremy Shepard will be here. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun. Lots of cool things that we're going to be doing uh, with him. They've got cool projects. I don't even know what all is happening. So anyway, came in this week. Lots and lots of uh, accessories. But the big thing, uh, I got McPherson Carbon Fiber gu Guitars back in, Carbon Series. We have both... Uh, one of each of the uh, uh, different patterns for camo. I have one camo touring, I have one camo sa sable, I have one honeycomb touring, and one honeycomb sable, both in the blackout editions. Those just came in, they should be hitting the website soon. I've been getting lots of calls on that double O that came in early this week um, from Bourgeois. We got the OM, so we'll talk about that one more time. The first touchstones have arrived. This is the OM Touchstone from Bourgeois. Again, these are built exactly the same as, well, I can't say exactly the same as the Lewiston ones, but it is very, very similar. The same bench. I was there. I watched them do it. The same luthiers, the same people are voicing the tops for these guitars right with the same tools, same everything, same style, uh, right next door to to the Lewiston built guitars. They build every one, voice the tops, get them all done with the bracing. They have the woods already over in uh, Bajau at the Eastman facility, and Eastman constructs them from that point on. They just basically assemble them, and they already, they're a specially trained uh, team that is over there that has been trained to do it exactly the same as the team in Lewiston. So for all effects, this is a bourgeois guitar. It says so right there, the same style of neck it's a slightly different shape uh only in that it's a little more rounded not quite as v'd as the standard ones but all the innovations 
the tone tight neck or bourgeois neck joint, the uh, thicker saddle, the unslotted pins, the slotted bridge uh, that is done instead of pins, all of that stuff. So this is, and then these have been upgraded. This is not an Eastman OM. I will tell you that. One, it's a long scale. Two, it sounds different. It is voice different. It is meant to sound and play like a bourgeois guitar. I've watched Dana personally go through these and do it. So anyway, there's been tons of comments and I know I'm spending so much time rambling about why I think these are the same because man, the controversy. You guys, you guitar players, love your controversy. You're just going nuts about these guitars. The bourgeois people that really hate on the idea of doing this are really hating on it. The ones that love the idea of doing this are really loving on it. And guess what? I think they are great. I played it. I tell you it is very comparable to any of the U.S. built bourgeois and that's what it's designed to do. So here's the big difference. This guitar I believe is at $2,900 so just under $3,000. You'll get a all solid all of the innovations of bourgeois. Uh, it is an Alaskan spruce top, Adirondack spruce bracing, voiced by Dana's team in Lewiston. That's what it is, Rosewood sides and back. All right, so that's the OM. Now we're gonna get to see the Dread. Now, here's the cool thing. If this lands up one of the ones that I hand selected, and I had somebody, this was a funny one too, another comment. Well, is there, are they so inconsistent that you have to select ones? No, but like any guitar, there's a variance from one guitar to the next, and I just picked my favorite ones. They were all great. There was not a dog in any of the ones that I played. Um, but anyway, I digress. This one is the Bourgeois uh, Touchstone Dread. And I'm assuming it's one of the ones that I picked out because I put my name on it, so we'll find out for sure. Again, same specs, Alaskan Sitka Spruce Top, Adirondack Spruce Bracing. This is going to be East Indian Rosewood. Again, that bourgeois profiled neck. It is the uh, 23 30 seconds, inch and 23 30 seconds nut width. All the specs that you would expect out of a bourgeois guitar. I'm going to get my pick out and see how close. Let's see if I can break a string on this one. Start in tune, so. Sounds fabulous. Uh, I there's nothing I can complain about there. So. so there you go. That is the new one. I don't think the first one has been spoken for. Unlike the OM, we're going to be filming with these uh, tomorrow, and uh, you'll kind of get to see more uh, once the video is edited. But once that's done, this can be sh this cannot be shipped out, but it can be spoken for. This exact guitar. I can't ship it out until they release the rest of this because this did come early. They haven't officially released the Dreadnoughts yet. They've released a very small amount of OMs, but this guitar can be had. So here's the bad part. I don't have an heirloom in stock right now. The only thing I have is a Generation D. Similar. Uh, and we may do that. Maybe we'll put the two, uh, the Generation D and put it together. I don't have an heirloom in stock, so there is some differences in those guitars. Um, so let me see what I can do on that. I would love to find that out. I, I will tell you this, I played an heirloom while I was in Lewiston, and I played one of these. And again, uh, we did it with Dana and James there. They couldn't hardly tell the difference. Uh, so I cannot tell you, stress to you how much the team in Lewiston, Maine is trying to make sure these are every bit the quality. So much so that this sits right next to every Lewiston built guitar that goes out of Lewiston, right next to them. 
and Dana Voy uh, goes through and inspects them as they leave. In case you don't know that already with Bourgeois, Dana wants to hand select and look through every one for the week. He looks through every detail, goes through the setups, goes through all of that. These were right next door to every guitar that was going out the door that week. Sitting there, I watched Dana walk over, grab them one by one, go through them, do his little changes and setups and things that he wanted to do to make sure they were perfect on their way out the door. So again, I know this is gonna be hard for some of you guys to believe, but it just makes sense. It is hard for, for the Lewiston team to make a guitar, especially with what the market allows, uh, that would you know hit their standards and with the costs of parts and building and all that kind of stuff and hit that price point uh, and but yet he wants more people to be able to play his sounding guitars so he's been trying to do this forever if you've known the bourgeois system you've known that he's tried to do this a couple different times to get an affordable guitar that would hit the masses at a much easier price point point. and again i'm going to hear some of you guys people will give me the well three thousand dollars isn't that cheap well you're right but it sure beats seven um, and it beats six, so uh, it is quite a bit less than some of the boutique level guitars. It is higher than others, but it's designed to be in that spot, and this was the only way that they were going to do it. Even Dana and his entire team said the only person, the only company that could have ever made this happen would have been Eastman with their hand voicing, with their ability to do things that way, and they do this to his spec all the way across the board. So there you go. That was my preaching and my rambling about the Touchstone series. If you love bourgeois guitars, you love the voicing of that, you will not be disappointed in this guitar. That said, it is intentionally built to be different sounding than an Eastman Dread. If you love the Eastman Dreads and you like a bigger, boomier kind of guitar and less nuanced and less uh, controlled uh, tonally, then Stick with the uh, Eastman's. They've got great stuff coming out here shortly with that, with the uh, uh, the new Madagascar uh, with the Adirondack tops. Guess what? I also know for a fact there's going to be more of these being built. I've seen the prototypes, so you'll get a chance to see those. So I, I'm off of my soapbox now, guys. I'm off of it. I'm done. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about this, which is the first ever seen in the wild mandolin from Eastman. This is the MA5. This is mandolin A style five. Um, again, this has a lot of upgrades, and I, I know I can't. I'm gonna not remember. Can you look up the tuner manufacturer of these? I can't remember what it was. So these are in a little bit different case. Has a hygrometer built in. Um, we played a lot of these, and Jeremy actually picked four of the best. They and what we kept saying again, not one of them was a bad mandolin, but there were a few of them that were a little bit of a standout. So we picked them, we got the chance to do so. So here we go. What's that bottom end? Again, I'm not a mandolin player, but each one of these comes with the James tail piece. It is a uh, torrified or uh, thermo cured Adirondack spruce top. It is a uh, torrified, and again, I can't remember the kind of maple, but it's a higher grade of maple. This is the finest violin grade maple out there. All torrified sides and back, neck, everything is done. And then I just cannot, for the life of me, remember the manufacturer of these tuners. They're gonna go get the spec sheet, good. So that. I'm not a mandolin player. I just play one on TV. <laughs> anyway, these are gonna be, I think, a big hit. We saw the prototypes for the Fs. They are getting close to being done. We'll hopefully see those at the beginning of the year, but absolutely exquisite. They look great, they sound great, 
and uh, I'm really impressed. I think these ones are going to sell, I believe, at right around $24.98, something like that, right around tw under $2,500. Um, very good, and again, stepping up uh, just in parts alone, quite a bit of a difference, um, but just a great mandolin. This is for that next step mandolin. If you've been doing the Eastman line, uh, next step, I would really, you know, again, I, I don't always like talking about brands that we don't carry in here. Not to, that uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't want people to think I'm beating them up. I think they're going to compete very close with the Northfield uh, line of mandolins as far as price point and what you get for your dollar. Did we get to see what it was? Uh, the, well, I Tuners? Like the tuner. Yep. Waverly Golden Age Satin. The Golden Age. They, you're right. It was that. It was Waverly. So these are Waverly Golden Age Tuners. Um, this is the uh, various, it's a series meant to kind of replicate some of the older uh, tuners, not just like the newer Waverly's that are there. So again, super high quality tuners. The feel of the neck is great. It's a much more V-shaped neck. It feels great, it sounds great. And again, I know that there are four of these. We are bringing some to Winfield. We are bringing some to IBMA. Um, I'm gonna have a bunch of these. Uh, we got a bunch of the first picks of the Dreadnoughts and OMs coming in. Uh, these are the first two to be shipped. They had to limit, but I know for a fact there are more of those on the way. Um, that covers most of the new stuff with this. I'm really excited to do the videos on these. We're going to do some comparison stuff. If what you guys want to hear, tell me uh, what you want to hear on these. Again, if we can get an heirloom, we might try to compare the two uh, touchstone with that. I think it's a great idea. Um, and see, I, I, there's no doubt there's going to be some differences. There's got to be some differences. But it's going to be a lot more minute and uh, finessed than what I think a lot of the people who have been looking at these guitars are going to say. So, again, for all you naysayers out there, I think you're going to be extremely surprised. I, I really do. Um, again, if you're wanting a custom-built bourgeois, there is nothing that is going to compare to that. They're, the idea of this is not to make one-offs with expects that match your stuff. We've got bourgeois coming that are gonna knock your socks off. I picked woods that are incredible. There's a uh, set of uh, sinker mahogany that's amazing. There's a set of Madagascar that we're using on a signature OM that is probably some of the most beautiful I've ever seen. Uh, bear claw top for a banjo killer that I just think is a monster. Um, so again, those are what uh, Bourgeois is going to kind of lean a little bit more on. Um, for the standard models, you're going to be looking more at what the Touchstone line has to offer because the pricing is going to be much, uh, much more fair and easy to kind of palette for a lot of people. So there you go. Um, I got one more little mean comment that I heard a lot of, you know, why is Bourgeois selling out to a Chinese company, all this kind of stuff. Guess what, guys? I hate to tell you this, but Eastman is an American company. They're built in China, but it is an American company. And I think you're going to be surprised again at what this relationship has done. We got tons of cool video of it. You're going to get the chance to see some of it, and uh, hopefully you'll be impressed. Or maybe you won't. I don't know. You may, you may not. Either way, check out all the cool stuff that is coming in. We got great guitars coming very shortly from Boucher for IBMA. I've got great stuff coming from Bourgeois. Thompson has some special guitars uh, being built for Winfield and IBMA. We will be there with those. Um, I'll have more Eastman stuff coming in. Uh, you guys already seen some sneak peeks of some of the super secret uh, guitars from Eastman. Those E6 SS's are moving pretty quick. Um, check those out and, uh, huh? The new carbon fibers, yep, we, that we just got in from, from uh, McPherson. Check those out. FERC has got some great stuff with the vintages. They're gonna bring even more to uh, their, and we got the, do we even talk about when we got in the new vintage uh, ones and twos and whatever we got in? So good, we got the vintage ones from FERC, uh, both in Rosewood and Mahogany. Twos are on order and there'll be more of those as well as some other cool FERC guitars. Uh, guys, I got so much stuff going on. New uh, t-shirts and merch gonna be happening very shortly. So look at that too. Again, put stuff in the comments if you wanna, even if you're not on the live feed right now, uh, Keegan and his team are doing a great job uh, answering all those, and they and it's not just coming from them. They come to me all day long asking. So if you've got a question for me, Jeremy, or Jason, they will uh, get it to us, and we will help answer all those. So it is not just a robot answering this, I promise you. He sounds like a robot, but it's not a robot. Sorry.
That's just the way it is. Anyway, I hope you guys had fun with us. I had a blast. I am super excited about these guitars. I think a lot of people will be. And uh, there you go. So thanks for joining me for New Guitar Thursday. Hopefully we'll see you next week.